Kimaria always saw Drenioi, not understanding how a peaceful moment could turn to intense pain. How her mom went from one moment hugging her and helping her to a higher level of their home, then going away. Then later on, after helping her onto the third level, but suddenly pushing her. Drenoy was very good at maintaining her balance, but she always fell off in those moments where she was pushed by her mom. She always maintained total trust in her, where she didn't even force out any counter-resistance to the touch of her mother, and easily fell off the other side onto a hard pole that she had to grab on, lest she face a long fall to the ground. Or other times, her mother, after handing her a new fruit, bursts out with a jab towards her and striking her shoulder, a blow that sent her tumbling into the expanse from the second or third level of the home. Luckily, she could always catch on to something to stop her fall. She seemed to always feel distress, never understanding the seemingly random aggression, never capable of making the connection that it was a form of training, some brutal semblance of nurture. She barely could express her feelings of trust and affection to her parents. This factor already made it so much harder. Kamaria, after seeing these memories, understood that it's a custom from many generations ago. It's so normal it's even seen as a correct way of showing affection to the young. A caring parent works hard in preparing their young. Even a normal interaction with friends, family, and lovers, they seamlessly tie in acts of combat. Because of Drenioi not catching that connection, she couldn't associate with something universally crucial to everyone around her. It was their culture. A clan with such brutal customs for survival that their young, if born with any disability, were discarded by their family. It became a point of frustration for her parents especially after noticing something bizarre in her after her birth. Shortly an hour after being born, she already tracked objects and people with her eyes, able to raise her head and chest when on her stomach, responding to smiles whenever one of them smiled at her, griping objects and bringing them to her mouth. These were things that their people should have only been able to do within a month of being born. At a week after being born, she could already reach out and manipulate things in the areas around her. She could even crawl or roll around to get to places, something that made taking care of her a bigger task for her parents, especially considering the structure of homes. She was capable of sitting up and superb control of her head by turning it in response to noises and being able to follow and track sounds. A month later, she had completely dominated the skill of crawling and could already stand to increase her access to new objects and things for her to manipulate. They observed such incredible growth in their child and were astounded but extremely overjoyed with the coming months and her development advancing at an enormous rate. She grew as a strong, healthy child, till they realized she hadn't yet talked, even though she understood language and commands very well. She just never made an attempt at communication. She had a habit of looking at everything and always observing. At home, there was always a particular corner of cobwebs that always drew her attention the most. She spent hours daily observing the old cobwebs and new ones that those spiders made. She would even draw them out on sand or paper whenever her parents let her use it. It was her only focus, and happened enough for her mother Grothy to constantly tell her to stop making spider webs, silly girl. Kimaria couldn't help but feel pain along with Drenioi, words that always intensely bothered the nonverbal and non-communicative girl. She always ended up drawing these patterns more and more intensely, and hiding more and more inside of herself. Kimaria often heard her parents saying she has the uncommonly powerful instincts and body that only pop up in their village every hundred and sometimes thousand years. How it feels like she has no soul. Her defensive instincts are unmatched, but it rarely goes past that she only defends. We've been trying to prepare her for the coming-of-age event that is mandatory for all the children of royal candidate families when they turn 13. To either come back with a guardian spirit, die, or return to be banished from their clan forever. Kimaria woke to the roar of Sunny in her head, screaming of danger. 